First take this $20 and go to the hospital, because I promised mom I'd do something for her first. My husband said, pulling out the bill and handing it to me. I was completely taken aback by this unexpected turn of events and could only stand there dumbfounded, watching him drive away. Incredibly, he had chosen to leave his wife, who was in pain from her water breaking, to prioritize taking his mother to her hobby class. Despite the harassment I had suffered from my mother-in-law, Mary, and the tough times she put me through, I had always endured it, thinking of our unborn child. But now it was clear to me. A person who disregards their child like this doesn't deserve to be a parent. I steeled myself to face childbirth alone, enduring the increasing pains. I am Jane. Tom, whom I married right after graduating from college, is three years older than me, and we lead a reasonably happy married life. He was a senior at the club I belonged to in college. He seemed to have fallen in love with me at first sight when I joined as a new member, and looking back, I was embarrassingly overwhelmed by his passionate approach. As a young adult, just being a senior made him seem irresistibly cool, and I responded to his approach. We dated smoothly from three months after I enrolled until graduation. Even after marriage, Tom was head over heels in love with me, so I never worried about him cheating. He proudly tells his colleagues how happy he is to come home on time every day and eat the meals I cook while they're still warm so I doubt any woman would purposely approach him. However, Tom has always been particularly kind to women, and naturally, some were drawn to him. But he has always been devoted to me, and I've never been attracted to any other man. However, there's a reason why I initially described our marriage as reasonably happy. That reason is my mother-in-law, Mary. I thought mother-in-law problems were a thing of the past, but Mary frowned the moment she saw me. What's with your hair? Looks like you dumped paint on it. Let me guess, you dyed it in a hurry last night, trying to look innocent? It's embarrassing, can you leave my son and go home for today? Seriously, you knew we were meeting, you should have taken care of your hair earlier. When I first visited Tom's family before we got married, Mary said this, and I, still young, turned pale with fear. Just as Mary said, I realized the day before that my hair color was too bright, so I dyed it with Tom's help. Feeling embarrassed and frustrated at being seen through, I was downed for a while after that. It was my fault for the breach of etiquette, but I wouldn't have been so upset if Mary had been a bit more restrained in her comments. Because of my hair color, I felt like I was being pushed away from Tom and was sent back home alone from my first visit to his family, so Tom called me later. Mom was just nervous and came off too harsh. She actually likes you, Jane, so don't worry. She's in favor of our marriage and really wants you to visit home again. This time, I was irritated with Tom's carefree talk. He didn't stop Mary from making snide remarks right in front of me, and he even seemed to be defending her. There's no doubt Mary doesn't genuinely want me at her house. Would I be pressured to live with them after marriage and face daily harassment? Surprisingly, when we got married, Mary didn't suggest anything like that. I was relieved, but soon after, Mary began frequently inviting Tom to her home. Now that you've finally graduated from a far-off university and got a job here, you get married right away. I've been so lonely. Why don't you let Jane rest and stay here for about a week? Messages like this would arrive for Tom, and I shivered. Showing me the message, Tom asked. What do you think? Instead of answering, I called Mary right there. I'm sorry, but we haven't finished unpacking and the paperwork isn't done yet either. It'll be a while before Tom can relax. I apologize. When I said this, Mary replied with nagging words. Do the unpacking yourself? Don't always rely on my son. But I just nodded along and ended the call. Mary's offer to let me rest was just a facade she wanted her dear son by her side. I was annoyed with Mary for lacking consideration, especially as newlyweds, and also upset with Tom for not refusing. According to Tom, Mary has always been like this. Her overprotectiveness worsened after she divorced Tom's father. When Tom decided to go to college, she cried and tried to stop him. Somehow he convinced her and went to college, 
but they communicated via messages and calls almost every night. Tom trusts his mother, who raised him as a single mom, so they've always had a good relationship. It's fine to be a caring child and mother, but there should be an appropriate distance between adults. And I understand it's not good to interfere with another family's dynamics. He was serious about his job and chores and had a nice personality, so for a while, I tried to come to terms with it. But it wasn't long before I began to question the uncomfortably close relationship between the two of them. One holiday, my usually late sleeping husband woke up earlier than me and started preparing to go out, so I asked. Did we have plans to go somewhere today? Mom and I are going shopping, Jane. You can keep sleeping. He replied with an unbelievable answer. Apparently, Mary wanted to buy clothes and asked Tom to come along so she could ask for his opinion. I got angry again at my husband for agreeing without hesitation, but tried to stay calm. You finally have a day off. Let's do something together. I tried to keep him walking out the door. But he shook his head and replied. I'd like that, but I already promised mom, and she seems to be waiting outside already. Shocked by his words, I headed to the entrance in my pajamas. Looking out the window to the garden, I saw Mary's bright red car parked there. Noticing my gaze, Mary turned around and smirked as she got out of the car. Tom, you're late. Jane's a stay-at-home wife and still asleep at this hour? Pathetic. Should I buy you an alarm clock on our way home today? Mary, with her bright red lipstick matching her car, laughed heartily and affectionately took my husband's hand, leading him to the passenger seat. I was dumbfounded watching their cozy interaction and could only watch as Mary's car sped away cheerfully. After this incident, my husband's behavior started to change gradually. He almost stopped doing the household chores he used to do naturally and began going to his family's house almost every weekend. His attitude towards me also changed, becoming more domineering. Jane, you're too lazy. When I have a day off, you just sleep with me, right? Can you call that being a housewife? You even stopped putting on makeup at home. That's not good after getting married. Mom is worried about you, too. Why don't you visit her alone once in a while? I don't know what Mary has been saying about me, but my husband agreeing with her is absurd. He never mentioned anything about naps or makeup during our courtship. But as my husband says, maybe Mary really is concerned about my behavior. I tried to convince myself of this several times, but knowing how Mary treats my husband like a lover, I can't help but see it as harassment towards me. However, I thought Mary's curse would change once we had a child. I found out I was pregnant shortly after I started having doubts about my husband's behavior. His eyes lit up with joy. And he held my hand, promising to work through it together. But Mary's harassment got worse after this, indirectly forcing my husband to leave me alone for trivial reasons like shopping, hospital visits, or cleaning her house. I tried explaining to my husband that Mary's actions were malicious towards me, but it backfired. He suddenly snapped with anger. Mom always talks about you when we meet. She says you should go back to your parents' house or take time for yourself. Getting angry over this will affect the baby in your stomach. You should appreciate Mom's concern. He started leaving me alone more often. As morning sickness worsened, I told him I was anxious being alone and wanted him to be with me as much as possible. But to my cry for help, his reply was unbelievable. Even if I'm around, there's nothing I can do for you. Mom said she wanted to be alone all the time during her pregnancy and didn't even want to see Dad. He wouldn't listen to me. And feeling physically and emotionally unstable, I resolved to fight alone. Then, one day while shopping for baby items with my husband, we bumped into one of his colleague. Tom, I hear you're actively attending parenting classes. Your home library is full of parenting books, right? Today, too, accompanying your wife for shopping, you're going to be a great dad. Can't wait for your child to be born. I was so shocked that I blurted out. What? Tom quickly interjected laughing. Stop it, man. Turns out, 
he's been pretending to be a devoted new father at work, making up stories. I kept quiet to avoid a scene with the colleague, but inside, I was seething with anger. He continued to prioritize Mary, and occasionally, when I ran into his colleagues, they'd envy me. Jane, you found the ideal husband. These incidents gradually made me start distrusting my husband's words and actions. I can't say for sure if the stress caused it, but one weekend, while I was making lunch, I noticed my pants were wet. A certain thought crossed my mind, so I rushed to the bathroom. And sure enough, I realized my water had broken. I headed to the bedroom where my husband was still sleeping and yelled to get the car ready right away. My husband, groggy at first, quickly helped me walk by supporting me under my arm when he learned my water had broken. The nurses had repeatedly told me to come to the hospital immediately if my water broke. There might be urgent danger, so my husband was also somewhat panicked. In the midst of labor pains, we finally managed to get into the car and started driving when my husband's mobile phone rang. Unable to answer while driving, I peeked at the screen amidst my pain. When I saw Mary's name, I intuitively had a bad feeling. I glared at the screen for a while, but the ringing continued the entire time. Thinking it would be quicker to explain the situation, I reluctantly answered the phone. Tom, where are you? It's Wednesday, it's the day for my craft class? Did you forget? Mary's voice, never used when talking to me, sent chills down my spine, but I explained to her. Mary, actually, my water just broke, and I'm on my way to the hospital with Tom. As soon as I spoke, Mary's tone changed dramatically, and she started yelling at me. That's your own problem. I don't care. How dare you use your resting husband as a taxi? Put Tom on the phone. Today is the fixed day for my craft class. I had the appointment first. Stunned, I couldn't believe Mary was saying such things, not even concerned about her grandchild. I remained silent, but Mary's shrill voice continued. Sorry, Jane, my husband muttered. For a moment, I thought he was apologizing for Mary's outburst. But then, I realized he had walked around to the back seat where I was lying and was opening the door. Confused and in pain, I was speechless. Then my husband said something unbelievable. I had promised to drive mom, so can you take a taxi or ambulance from here? I'll definitely catch up later. That's the plan. Wait. Are you prioritizing your craft class over your own child? I can't convince Mary, so you talk to her. The pain is getting worse, hurry up. I was desperate, so I raised my voice. But my husband frowned and said, It's a regular commitment. It can't be helped. I'm sorry I forgot to tell you about it. Here's some money, please manage with this. He took $20 from his wallet and stuffed it into my bag. Then, he went back to the driver's seat and left me there without hesitation. I can't believe this. I was still close to our house. Not wanting to be seen by neighbors, I quickly looked up for a taxi. Amniotic fluid continued to trickle down my legs, and I panicked about the baby's safety. Tears welled up in frustration as I stared at my mobile phone, trembling with pain, wondering why we had to endure this. Jane! Startled by my name being called, I turned around and saw a familiar face. What's wrong? You look terrible. Don't worry about talking, just get in. This person gently supported me and helped me into the back seat of their car. Her husband adjusted the seat for me as he sat in the driver's seat. After that, my memory is fuzzy. I was rushed into a wheelchair at my regular hospital and taken to a prepared hospital room. The pain was so intense that I groaned, but I was told there was still time before the birth, so I rested there. I endured the overwhelming pain that occasionally threatened to make me lose consciousness when suddenly, my mobile phone rang. Thinking it might be a callback from my mother, who I had called on the way, I was shocked to find it was my husband. Looking at the clock, it was already evening. Three hours had passed, and now he arrives? I decided not to answer. But after continuous ringing, I picked up the phone, irritated. Jane! Help me! 
I want you to explain the situation. Not even a word of concern for me, and now he wants help? Even if he was about to be eaten by a crocodile, I had no obligation to help the man who abandoned his child and me. Who do you think you are? How dare you say such things? I yelled at my husband through the mobile phone and then hung up. After a while, I faced childbirth alone. I would have liked to have my reliable husband holding my hand at such a time, but it's better off without a foolish husband who can't even prioritize things right. Instead, I received support from the kind nurses, and by nightfall, my long-awaited baby was born. Both mother and child were safe, and I fell asleep quickly due to the exhaustion. The next morning, the first thing the nurse told me when she came into my room was that my husband had come. Apparently, he came right after the birth, but since I was sleeping so deeply, the nurse kindly sent him back home. Honestly, I thought I would never want to see my husband again. But when he entered the room looking so haggard, I couldn't help but ask what happened. The person who had helped me in my suffering and taken me to the hospital yesterday was N, a neighbor I had always been close with. She had taken care of me like her own daughter since her son was about the same age as me, and she had been a great support to me when I was newly married and anxious. When I told her in the car that my husband was taking Mary to her hobby class, she was furious as if it was her own matter. Little did I know that this would ultimately corner my husband. After dropping me off, and spread the story around the neighborhood. Being the head of the neighborhood association, her words spread quickly, and her friends seemed to have confronted my husband about it. The reason my husband was begging for help was this, it seemed to have caused quite a commotion, attracting onlookers around our house. No matter how panicked he was, it was obviously too foolish of him to ask for my help in that situation. I had not heard from Mary since then, and my mind was already made up. Sorry, but can you leave? I'm still not feeling well, and my parents are coming soon. Both of them know about this, right? I want to apologize, can I stay? My husband spoke in a small, pitiful voice. What? You wanting to apologize is not my business. I'm busy, so please leave. Don't say that. By the way, where's the baby? I'll leave after seeing the baby. Just leave. There are other pregnant women here, so please go. Even though I replied coldly, he still stood there, so I turned my back and covered myself with a blanket. I'm sorry. Please call mom for me. I want to send her a photo of the baby. Can I call the nurse? Unbelievably, my husband reached out and shook me. When I couldn't stand it anymore and was about to push him away. What are you doing? Don't touch my daughter. My parents walked into the room just in time. My mother rushed over and pushed my husband away. How dare you shake the body of someone who just gave birth? And after doing such a thing, how could you show your face here? I'm disappointed in you. Get out of here, now. Even I had never seen my mother so fierce and overwhelmed by her presence, my husband finally left the room. My father followed him, and I knew he would be thoroughly scolded. During my hospital stay, I refused to see my husband and took the baby to my parents' house after being discharged. I didn't want to risk meeting him, so I told him over the phone that I wanted a divorce. I only communicated about writing the divorce papers, mailing them, and claiming compensation, ignoring anything else he said. By the way, the compensation was for the scratches and bruises I got when he forcibly removed me from the car. He tried to make excuses, but I silenced him by saying I had testimony from and and her husband and photos of the injuries from that day. The lawyer said the cost for his malicious actions against a pregnant woman would be significant. While I was busy with the baby, Mary showed up at my parents' house once. The rumors spread by and didn't seem to fade, and the neighbors' gazes were cold. She blamed it all on me for not respecting our family, but my father handled everything. Both of them were scolded by my father, and I thought it would have been better if we had done this from the beginning. But to that my father said, The head of the household doesn't easily come to the forefront. He was oddly showing off. When I got used to childcare, 
I invited Anne to my parents' house and introduced her to them. Being of the same age, she quickly became friends with my mother, and we agreed to keep in touch. And then told me about my ex-husband, which she heard from a friend who worked part-time at his company. Her friend, who loves gossip like Anne, seemed to have spread the story about my ex-husband to others at some point. The story spread quickly again, and his reputation plummeted. He had pretended to be a devoted new dad, and the disparity was so great that his bosses and colleagues looked at him with disdain, leading him to resign in disgrace. Becoming unemployed with no qualifications just before turning 30, my ex-husband lived in fear of the neighbor's gazes, relying on Mary's pension and savings. Years later, I almost forgot he existed, but then he called again. Where are you? I'm in front of your parents' house right now, but the nameplate is different, isn't it? He said this out of the blue, so I responded in kind. Can't you tell by the nameplate? I've moved. What do you want? Moved? You're living it up with the compensation I gave you. Come back right now, let's start over. Mom wants to see you too. What you're saying makes no sense. Why would I go back to you? Still saying that? I don't want to hear anything, so don't call me. I hung up without waiting for a response, and my phone kept ringing for a while. After finally completing the call rejection settings, messages begging for reconciliation arrived. I read them all just in case, but... Don't you feel sorry that the child doesn't have a father? It's unfilial to not show yourself to mom after taking care of you. He wrote such nonsensical things, so I deleted them all and changed my email address. This whole ordeal was the worst, but thankfully, it allowed me to push for a favorable divorce and penalize the other party. Having such a terrible family member is not good for the child. Thinking so, I enjoyed relaxed parenting while being supported by my parents, who had become grandparents.